question. Sydney, just answer our introduction and go down as we go. So variances. So we start with our definition. A variance is a comparison between expected expected or budgeted and actual in a period. That's basically what variance is. And I know that from our earlier um, discussions, we can look at variances. So variances can be either can be broadly divided into so cost variances. Mr. Price, excuse me, please. Yes, please. That CAMCO stuff, are you not going to solve it? Which one is CAMCO? That question. Well, uh, solve last. People say they know it now. Uh, me, I didn't know all of Ah, uh, okay. I solved only the first so part. So please, remember to remember us. Okay. That's what I was asking earlier now. I would have done that before I started this very uh, I forgot. I just okay. checked my notes now. I noticed where I wrote it. I couldn't finish solving it. So all of them, that that one has gone to revision now. Okay. Okay, so we can divide variances into cost variances and sales variances. Now, um, so we can do our comparison like I usually do. So if expected, so the variances can be either once if we say favorable, right? Yeah. Or unfavorable, maybe. Or adverse. So adverse. So just um, generally speaking, we can look at our discussion. So. We're, we're looking at variances as our major topic, and we have just um, highlighted the main things we'll look at. So we said a variance really, at the end of the day, everything we're going to do, a variance in its discussion is a comparison between expected and actual performance in a period. So we're comparing expected with adverse. Now, um, for us to be able to get a wind of this, and as we continue moving forward, it now becomes important to distinguish between the two categories of variance, if you will. So we look at cost variances versus sales variances. And because of terminology and names um, going up and down, it's important for you to be able to identify, am I discussing cost variance or sales variance? And if you're not careful, then that now becomes an issue. I remember a student of mine, a long time ago, one of the first students I ever had for this course. She went into the exam and they gave her a sales variance question and she did cost variances and did not realize that she was, but as she was working, she was just finding out that she was struggling and the exam was up. That is, that's, I was so miserable when she came back and told me because she found out on her own and that's what 
some of the things that is funny about this course. Many of the things that would be problem for you in the first thing. It would be like if there's people <laughs> from our Madame's village that's doing you. <laughs> Okay, so um, cost variances versus sales variances. I want us to just remember these things are very basic because they are revision of things that we've done that you've done in prior studies. However, they are important for us to have those distinctions. So we said the variance, the result of a variance can either be favorable or adverse. So um, for us to be able to say a favorable variance is a good thing and adverse variance is a bad thing, but we cost and sales. First of all, the distinction will be what would constitute a favorable variance for cost. So for cost variances now, so if actual, or we start with expected, I just want us to keep the same thing. So if expected cost is greater Is greater than actual cost. What do we say? Adverse. It will imply. You say? Expected cost. So we spent more. Okay, we we spent less. That's favorable. Than we budgeted, right? Yeah, favorable. So that's favorable. Yeah. So if expected cost now. is less than actual Adverse. so we spent more than we expected so that's a bad thing so that's adverse now on the other hand for sales So we can just come and do the same thing. I'll just edit this. So for sales variances, if the expected sales is, so we'll see that if, ex if expected sale is now, I can change the sign, less than actual. So what's happening now? We sold greater than we expected to sell, right? Favorable. So that's favorable. Yeah. And then, so that's definitely favorable. Yeah. So if expected now is less. Okay, so I'll change that sign to, so I'll just make my life easy. So if expected sales is now greater than actual sales, so we sold less than we expected to sell, and that's a bad thing, right? So that's our best. Yeah, now we, we can continue. The, the number of reasons Mr. Brian, could yes, you sir. please put could you put sales if expected sales it's less than actual? I've already put for sales variances on top now. I know. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad that this woman is not here. If not, she would have said I'm being partial. Why? You said what? Who? Which woman? I'm afraid that she might watch the video and, and hear that I'm talking about her and the thing will still cause problems because I've been looking for trouble for too long. Oh, Ella knows the person I'm talking about. Our best friend. Trouble right now. You said what? What did you say? Yeah. 
Okay, so let's let's move on. I'll, I'll tell you, sir, All when right. I'm sure that I will not be in trouble because they will send me. It's me that used to receive the warning message on my phone. Nobody will be there to beg for me. So let me be careful. Okay. So there are a number of reasons why variances occur. And they can be categorized. with respect to the classes so we'll go back again okay so under cost variances now so under cost variances we can have um, cost for material cost, so variance is so direct material variances would have labor variances. So instead, um, we would have variable production variable production overhead variances you put the proper material you said what so sorry labor variances and maybe i wanted to go up and maybe just um, remove this direct because yeah, direct material is material variances. Material will all, materials will always change with level of activity. Even the strictest of the strictest concepts that we've looked at so far still considered material variances or materials as direct costs, right? What was that? Yeah. What was the concept? Yeah, yeah, throughput, right? Yeah, put. So God bless you. Your head is there. So I told her to Ella, you see? <laughs> okay, so um variable production overhead variances and then fixed overhead variances, fixed production overhead. Okay, so those are our cost variances. Now for and please, if you're copying, be leaving space because I want to expand on this. I'm going to expand on each of them going forward. So when we are looking at our sales variances now. Um, we have two two main sales variances. Our when we look at sales revenue, revenue we have said this earlier on at the beginning of decision making. Something from prior studies too. What are the two things that contribute to your sales to your revenue? What are the two things? Volume and price. Exactly. So sales. Okay, let me let me say that upstairs instead. So because sales revenue is a function of volume of price and volume. Then the two sales variances are two sales variances. 
or selling price variance and sales volume variances. Now, I'll just expand on each of them so that we'll fill in. So when we're looking at material, material is a combination of, yes, can please. You, can you correct your, your sentence at the top? When I said there are numbers of reasons, is it, you said there are, a number of reasons, so then the last categorized. Yeah, a number of reasons why variances occur, and they can be categorized right. with respect to the classes. And the width? It's with respect to WRT. Okay. Okay, it's with respect to. How many people can, Ina? You said? You know, you wrote it as W R O T. Somebody that is not in class right now. Okay, please, even in exam, is. if you write right. W R T, standard, let me Google it. Let me check. W R T is with respect to anywhere in any context now. So, and I expect that you can write things like this in the exam. Your, your marker would accept it. It's not the first time. I've written W R T a number of times. Over, over our right up, if you remember. Yeah, no, no. I don't talk to you anything. You said what? I said I don't know. I've said what is doing me. Okay, <laughs> please write with respect to your book. God bless you. Okay, now, so for material variance costs, then there are two components to material costs. The amount we pay for the material and the number or the volume of that material, for lack of a better word, right? Mm. So the two things we'll be considering for material variances will be the amount we pay, which is the price, and the amount of material that we are going to use. So the usage. So for material, we'll have usage. Price. And price. Then for labor, we'll still have usage and price, right? Mm. So the same thing we would have for labor is usage and price. However, the usage of, of labor is how fast labor is working. So instead of calling it usage, we can call it efficiency because that's the same usage of labor. And then we look at the price of labor. You can't say price for labor. Labor is an image. It's not, it's not, there's no slave trade again. So now what we look at is the rates because there's no compulsion for someone to work for you. So we look at rates for, 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 labor variance, and then for variable production overhead, we have exactly the same thing. So we have still the usage of the overhead, so measured as efficiency that labor is using to carry out that um, overhead, to carry out the usage of the overhead. And then we can't talk about overhead in terms of rate because it's not a human being. So instead, we look at it in terms of expenditure. Yeah. And then finally, for our, finally on our cost variances, we look at our fixed production overhead variances. And so fixed production overhead, um, we look at the volume of fixed production overhead. So the volume will be a combination of efficiency and capacity. And as we go down, I would expand on this. So for the fixed production overhead, we have volume variance and the volume 
is a combination, like I said, of the efficiency and capacity while we have also our expenditure variance. Now, what I was looking at now was whether it would not, whether it would not have been sensible for us to look at um, reasons for having all these variances at this juncture. And it's for the people that are writing that is bothering me because I want to start, I can expand this further now when my upset people that are writing because it might, might look like, but it doesn't make any difference. You can write it under now, right? So let's just use common sense. Uh, this, these things are not exhaustive for me because a scenario in the exam, if they've asked all the possible reasons, I don't even want to get very many. I just want you to get an idea as to what constitutes a favorable way or what, what makes this variance so that I'll also be able to see whether you get the concept clearly. So let me carry this down and look at them individually. So what are the reasons? What things that might cause a usage variance. Uh, just to be fine, we move on. What are the things that could cause a, a usage variance? Material usage. The quality. So poor quality. So let me put that in bracket. Higher. So poor quality can lead to a to so this one is an adverse or if it is higher quality, then higher quality can lead to favorable, right? Yeah. Cyril, are you here? I am. Okay, you've been very quiet today. Okay, what's, what's another thing we can think of? For usage. So I can think of being experienced slash poorly motivated. So poorly motivated stuff would lead to adverse variances, adverse material variance usage variance. 
So we'll continue from here. So any other thoughts? And then we continue. What a pill free. Does it affect you? What? what? Pill free. 12 o'clock. So we're running late now. He said that the things that might lead to an adverse or a general variance for prices, what were the things we enumerated? He said change of supply. So price. So a change of supplier. Market price. So change in external market prices. So um, due to political or economic factors so these things could also be industry specific so we should be conscious of all those things when we are giving our discussion what else did we say um, um negotiation wait yeah exactly the negotiations oh, with current suppliers what about the um, competition um yeah competition can affect that's that's still external prices right so um mm -hmm. so change for material competition how competition leads to change in external prices that's economic factors now do you get uh, okay yeah, definitely, definitely. That's not an, um, that's a definite. The reason why your competitor price can affect is that maybe there's high competition. So your competitors are now requesting. So too many um, suppliers are mm -hmm. chasing, or too many customers are chasing few suppliers. Mm -hmm. So because of that, yes. suppliers prices start going up. So it's laws of demand and supply. That is economic factor. And that is a change in external price because it's not you that is doing it. Like I said, we can look at usage as internal. Okay. So usage is really okay. internal to the organization. If you can think of it in this sense, then it will work for you. Why price is usually external to that organization. Okay. So um, the good point you were talking about was obtaining and um, bulk discounts. So, so because you're buying in bulk, um, your the prices come down, and that's um, enough for me, as far as I'm concerned. I would just want, even if it's just one or one one in each of them, will be enough for me. Okay, so we go to um, labor now. What are the things that can affect your labor variance? Efficiency, learning course. first Efficiency of all. Efficiency, learning course. So for efficiency, I like I like that. I like that. So um, learning curve effects. When one part of the syllabus was joined with another part. That's usually what excites me the most. So learning curve effects. What else? Level of uh, like level of uh, machinery. We had the technological advancement. The technology too can affect your usage. Do you get that? Technology can affect your usage variance. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah? We don't know how to operate the machine. You get what I'm saying? 
to for material yes it cannot affect your material variance as per if improvement of machine if you have better quality machines that can have an effect on the usage you might now use less you might now have less wastages that kind of thing do you get what i'm saying yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back to our labor and rate. So we said efficiency, learning curve effects, great. Low morale, low um, slash or improved. So if you have improved morale, that can, of staff, can affect efficiency. What else? Labor hours. Is that what? Labor hours. That, that still has to do with. When you have low skilled staff, then I don't know. So, so low skilled staff still has a lot to do with learning curve effect now okay sure so learning curve as they as they continue and and those are the things those are still the learning curve effects generally as they continue working they get more experience that kind of thing all things um, that will lead um, to staff that. training you sir what about staff Especially, training yeah absolutely so staff training great so efficiency has to do with time taking by staff. I do time. Um, I don't know how how exactly. No, I'm asking you. I do time. We affect the. So idle time is, yeah, idle time, idle time, idle time is not. Idle time is not a labor variance. It's idle time is. Idle time labor variance that separate from efficiency and rate it is on its own okay yeah so when we look at hours worked versus hours paid the okay. difference between hours worked and hours paid is your okay. um, okay. idle time variance so it's separate okay. from any of these two it's treated as a separate thing on its own okay so training can improve efficiency so like i said and I can't say it enough. My own is to just give you ideas. So rate, no exhaustion in our list. So what can what can affect rate now? Mm, let me see. When workers work over time. So increase. So increase or decrease. Enough wages. Overtime too. So when you have overtime premium. What else? The rate of labor. In the level of activity level. Maybe you know, you know, you, you know, you're flexing. You're going to have to flex to carry out a variance, and we're coming to this. But with the flexing means that 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 increase in activity level will be compensated for by the fact that your flex budget will also increase in its own activity level. So I'm saying. Is there any other thing? I don't mind having to. I'm moving on. Um, rate now. Rate rate two is external. Efficiency is more internal. So efficiency has to do with stuff. So poor quality material. What will it affect in terms of labor? 
Usage. Hmm. Usage of labor is what? For efficiency. It's efficiency. Efficiency. Give them more time because of the quality of the of the material. Machines, Uko. Poor quality machines. It's still efficient. So we'll put two of them together. Um, so we go to... I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, what about this scenario that um, the, the organization we're talking about is... A scenario that this organization we're talking about, this brilliant system, is maybe in a market that, that has... A, 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 more of technological advancement and less of um of labor usage. Would that affect it? Yeah. Would that affect what? More of machines. They use more of machines instead of more of um, labor. What would it affect? Me? So machine intensive environments. Machine yes. in intensive environments will mean that our labor variances will be low compared to our overhead variances, but it doesn't mean that you will not still have labor variances because no matter what the company is, it must still employ labor. So if, if, for example, if you have very high machine intensity, there will still be some parts of the process that are manned by staff. And if staff have low efficiency or staff have low morale, then that can affect affect their ability to perform or the ability, the output generally can be affected by that. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Please, if I, if I say something and you don't get, it's, it's, I accept, it's very, very right for you to tell me you don't get to. Or sometimes I, don't I explain get, something I don't get, not be what I don't get to. Okay, so where, where, where? So you were talking about rate. increasing the rate, Abby. Mm. So he was talking about increasing the no, but that wasn't rate now. I don't think it was rate he was talking about. He said increase of of um, capacity of measure or where a company is or the production process is highly mechanized. So how does it basically affect efficiency or labor variances generally. And my, my thought was, no matter how mechanized a process is or a company's activities are, there are still human interaction with those machine, machines to various degrees. And so it means that we can still measure our labor efficiency and rates, even with a highly mechanized process. My only point was that if you have a very highly mechanized process, then the chances are that the total labor variances will be very small compared to the total variance within that organization, but doesn't eliminate the fact that there might be labor variances. Did you get what I said? And again, <laughs> Hello, because you did not say anything after that. Though. Yes, I can hear you. Considering that it is, um, it is the difference between budgeted and actual, you understand, eh? Even if the organization is machine intensive, at least we will have a standard labor hour. And a yes, standard, standard labor, standard, labor. That our standard cost, Abi. Yes, standard cost. At the, the yes. Five level of uh, automation of labor intensity. And what we're looking at is that this is our standard and this is our actual. At the end of the day. Definitely, I agree that. Okay, so let's, nine minutes into where we should have left. So let's look at um, our variable production overhead variances. So in terms of efficiency, please go ahead. What can affect efficiency?
So learning curve effects too. Because it's labor that will still use those overhead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So our efficiency of the use of overhead would also be affected by morale. So how much how, how fast how fast are we um, producing will have something to do with our variable production overhead. So those things that affect um, that, yeah, labor efficiency. So expenditure expenditure on overhead. Um, over time, definitely over time will. So if we if we if we work over time, then very likely we'll be incurring more overheads than we budgeted for. You say what? Like electricity rate, Yeah, yeah, like electricity, like those kind of things will be affected mm -hmm. by the amount of overtime we work. So if we work more than we expected, one more than our budget, then the chances are that we'll have higher expenditure. How about um, based on the machinery now that we used to work? Say maybe lack of maintenance can lead to higher expenditure. Yeah, but we generally look at that as fixed fixed overhead rather than variable. Okay. Those machine things, machine issues will generally be more more fixed overhead than variable overheads. Okay, so we'll go to our, like I said, I won't mind having one. So not, not to waste time, difference between efficiency, efficiency looks at the speed at which um, we're working so that we can, <clears throat> so that we can maximize output. Capacity, on the other hand, looks at the amount of time we have during a period. So the higher, the, if we have, if we used more time, if we spend more time in production, then we'll, we have a higher capacity to produce. So over time, things like over time will have an effect on capacity. Efficiency will be affected more by learning curve effects. Those kind of things will have an effect on um, efficiency for fixed overheads. Please, can you take it again? Yeah. I said that what will affect efficiency will be usually learning curve effects. Those kind of things will have an effect on efficiency. Efficiency measures how fast the speed of production. So if we're using, if we're fast, then we would have favorable um, efficiency variances. Do you understand? If labor is working efficiently, that's basically would. So the labor, that's why you will see that generally we will measure um, our standard hour in quotes. Our standard hour will be based on the labor hours. And we'll see that going through. The reason for that is that it is labor that affects efficiency of production. However, capacity has to do with how many hours we worked. So if we work longer, so longer hours, and this is the one that is not very logical. So longer hours will imply higher capacity. So capacity is just measuring how much time do you have to work. So it's not, the, on the other hand, if we spend more time then we'll say we are inefficient. So more time is inefficient. So how fast, how quickly? So e efficiency measures how much time was taken. Just like efficiency for overheads and for, for labor. 
on the other hand, capacity measures how much time we had. So the longer time we had, the higher the capacity. But the longer time we took to produce, the lower the efficiency. Mm. Did you get why I, I, I said that? Yeah. yeah. So, I do time now, we affect capacity in a way. Capacity? No, I, I don't do. think so. Yeah. I don't time, I do time will not affect capacity. No, I do time will not affect capacity. I do time I measured capacity will be more of machine or those things. Every time the different person they ask Yeah. Okay. So if we have if we have uh, if we have speed. machines that are faster, yeah. then it will increase both capacity and efficiency. And efficiency. Yeah, efficiency. So higher quality machines will affect our efficiency. So on the other hand, capacity. So So the increase in number of hours um, for lack of a better word, I'll still say increase in machine capacity. So if we increase the number of machines and they are working at the same rate, then that will have an effect. And then finally, expenditure. Is this is where maintenance comes in. Yeah, so things like maintenance. So poor maintenance now. So why buying new machines? Buying new machines will lead to adverse expenditure. So, mm -hmm. but it will lead to increase in ex in efficiency. So let me say acquiring higher quality machines. while purchase of higher quality basically new machines would have so that would be adverse expenditure variance Okay, so that's um, generally our outlook on this portion. So we go to our sales variances now. So our sales price, sales price variance would have to do with the, so demand factors too can affect sales price variance. But sales mm -hmm. price variance, so if we put a discount now, so discounts given to customers now what you are talking about with competitors that's where that's really where it is now so competitors so if you remember what we did 
um, when we are discussing the beginning of decision making with what was that thing again? Yeah, okay, I remember now. When we are looking at markets, um, demand factors are markets. We looked at um, different types of markets, and we we looked at reactions reactions to competitors. So if competitors increase their price, for example, then that can help us to get favorable variances because we said we can increase our price. But if, if you have a highly competitive market, and one of the things that will determine this is how competitive that market is. So the type of market that you're operating in, if you have a high com highly competitive market and your competitors increase or decrease their price, then that might force the company to decrease its own price, leading to um, adverse price variances. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. 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 So competitors inflation yes. inflation yes. on price effect. Those in, effect inflation, yeah. inflation will now mean so high inflation might lead to increase in price abi oh. and that yeah. increase in price if it's not factored into the budget will lead to um, an increase now there's something we have to remember we have to appreciate that that increased inflation, if we have the ability to pass through our costs, if we, if we can pass that increased inflation, maybe in the supply, so because we are incurring more, we're now charging our customers more. But what is the, what is the technical name for that in our discussion earlier? Thank you very, very much. That's all I wanted to hear. So there's hope. Ella, this, this beginning that you went to start from, is Spain of all. <laughs> so, right, don't give my trouble. <laughs> ah, this is really, really paying off. Mm -hmm. well, well, well. So yeah, price sensitivity. So the ability to pass the price on will be dependent on price sensitivity and the kind of operating environment, how competitive the operating environment is. All these things would have to be considered in the context of a scenario. Just having this head knowledge is fine, but it is not really important for passing the exam. What is important is for, your, for you to be able to appreciate what the scenario is dictating that you say. You can't just say general things because general things will not be re re rewarded. Okay, so um, increased inflation. can lead to higher costs. Of production. Which might further lead to increased prices. Giving favorable um, price variances. But this is dependent on the customer price sensitivity. Okay, so that's important. And then finally, our volume now, our sales volume variance. Um, our next class is on Tuesday by six. So we're going back to the normal timetable. Please remember that. So it's, now, it's no longer five, it's now six. One hour. So we, our, this class is not affected at all by the old change. 
So volume variance now, what can lead to a volume variance? Uh, why is everybody quiet like this now? Mr. Richard, today you're very quiet. It's like plenty of things are happening. I'm around, Brian. I'm around. Uh, okay. This is your from picture and voice to neither picture nor voice in one full soup. Don't know what we did though. Okay, so what can lead to an adverse or to a volume variance? Sales volume. Yeah, sales volume. This is, is not very sure like COVID 19. I like the way you use all these technical, you <laughs> make it very, very good. You just make people's lives very miserable around you. <laughs> if they, if you just start, uh, the thing will be very, very sweet. Uh, once they just come, they just the technical might just say seasonal variation. Let them chew on that. One. Then you can use that time to be stealing money. Correct. The English is too big. What's seasonal variation again? Variation of seasonal. Oh. Okay, sales volume now. Uh, but seasonal variation will be captured. You know that the um, standards are made over a period. So generally, all the seasonal variations that will occur over that period will generally um, be reflected in the standard. Except, and I can get what you're saying, that there will be times when it will move. So if we're comparing a, 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 a sub-period where variation is either at a low level or at a high level compared to the trend, then that can give a favorable or adverse volume variance, right? Yes. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. I, I get I get the point. So I would have to agree completely with that. That seasonal variation. That leads volumes to be higher. Or lower in a particular, and that's really when you're doing something like months. So month or week now, but over the year, that seasonal variation will cancel out, right? <coughs> no, it's for a short time. It has to be within a part of the budget, between the mm -hmm. part of the budgeted um, period. And volume variance, um, economic, political factors. What's a practical example of an economic factor that can lead to Adverse sales volume variance. Um, recession. Mm -hmm. No. Definitely recession. If you're yeah. in a, if, a, if you're in an industry that is a normal industry that produces normal goods, then in recession the volume would drop. Yeah. Coronavirus. Uh huh. Uh huh. Where's that person? And they wonder which kind of recession is your first when you have coro in front of you. You say recession. You have a better example now. Correct. So um, economic political factors. Yeah, that that too can affect sales volume. Um, changes in technology, demography, taste. Yeah. So all those kind of things can have effect. So that's great. We have beaten this one to death. So let's move on now. Uh, computations. But there's something I was saying. I just thought of, and I said when I get to this place, I would, I would mention it, and I forgot it. I spent too much time. 
wrong budgeting? Is it wrong budgeting? Uh, you no, know, there's something. I, maybe I'll, I'll definitely remember it. It's just that I would have liked to put it here for those people that are copying. But definitely, we, we have six or seven classes for variances. So we're going to beat this one. We, we, there's nothing we can possibly forget over the span of what the time we're going to use. So I remember it. I would have liked to put it. I, I, I think what I wanted to say, I wanted it at the introduction of the computations. But it will come sometime. So we, our computations now, we look at our... So there are a number of things to... I don't know whether to say memorize. But let me just start, for lack of a better word. And um, please leave space so if you're writing, don't say I did not tell you because I might remember the thing and it will be important and I'll have to carry it to the top. So I want to first define terminology now. So SQ, quantity. Oh, quantity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Siri. SQ is your prefect. I, 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 I knew you were going to make a comment here, Ella. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So SP is senior prefect. Um, AQ is actual quantity. AP is the filling station. Most importantly, S. Okay, so um, I want to carry, so let me just wait. I'll come back to that. Um, what else? Let me say AQ, AP. Don't worry, you, you'll see this later. Is usually. Really, let me emphasize that almost always. Uh, okay, so don't worry. Giving in total terms. Um, so let me let me continue. AQ. So. Um, Actual, what's that thing again? Actual hour, actual rate. Okay, so I'll I'll go to the other side. So S Q S H. Our standard rates, standard hour, what are we compare here? Yeah, standard hour S R is our standard rate. Then AQH is our actual R. Uh, and AR is our actual rate. So we said both AR, AQ, AP, and AH, AR. So let me let me bring that down. Let me let me first say something. SQ 
or SH, depending on whether you're doing material or labor, is short for standard quantity standard quantity slash hours of actual production so that's something that we are going to see let's state it here it won't be the last time so it means that our sq sh is usually given to us per unit standard hour standard quantity per unit yes That one is not important. When we start, once we start working now, you will see what I'm talking about. Um, then the actual hour, actual price, actual quantity, actual price, or actual hour, actual rate is almost always given in total terms. Then we just do a few things and then we're ready. So for direct material now, so we'll start our computation for direct material. So our direct material, we have standard quantity, standard price. Actual. Um, I want to make a confession. So actual quantity. Standard price. Standard price. That space was too much. Not, yeah, it's not too much. But. Then actual quantity, actual price. Actual price. Um, how do we do this now? I've always thought about this. How do I do? Would I just put it in the middle? You can put it beside or at the side. The way you just did it, like that, with the figures. Unfortunately, there is no way. I can't see any way to do it. So all we just have is, um, so for our direct material, we have, so please, this first performer gives you, this is how all the other performers are. The only thing is that we'll change the Q and the P to H and R, depending on whether we're doing material. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so depending on whether we're, are doing material or labor, labor and the other ones that use hours. So labor yeah. overhead. If it's labor overhead, then it will be hours and rates. But if mm -hmm. it is material, then it will be quantity and price. If not, they remain the same. So for our direct material, our variance now, top minus bottom is usage. And if you see, this is where physically I need to be. So maybe I should go to my, okay, no need. Can you, Why don't you go to the draw tool? You see now, if we look at my cursor, um, uh, if, you say what? You say what? Draw tools. You can use, go to the draw tools and pick up drawing and you can just put it on. Oh, so I should, I, I would have drawn first and then yeah, you put can, it here, Abby. You can draw. And yeah, I can do that. I do that sometimes. Mm. Okay, so maybe that will help us. So, okay. From home, insert so, draw. So that's true. That will be reasonable. Yeah, so I can draw it and come and paste it here. So just, just for example now, 
Um, let me let me get a whiteboard. So let me use my whiteboard. Oh, okay. You said draw tools on what? Is that what you said? Yes, there's draw tool on, the tools on Word. Okay, okay, no problem. I'll just carry it from here. So my okay. standard quantity. So for material now, this is for material. I write it is horrible, but So for materials, I have standard quantity, standard price, then I have my actual quantity. So actual quantity, standard price, and then I have my actual quantity actual price. So my difference between the top and the bottom is my, and what I'm saying is you see that if I look at this performer, and this is the core thing that we need to remember when we are going to our advanced variances, because these are basic variances now. So tomorrow, once we start the class, first of all, I'll distinguish between basic and advanced variances, and then we'll move on to what we are doing. So if you look at this now, price is kept constant. Are you seeing that? The top and the mm -hmm. bottom, if we are comparing them, the price is constant. What is changing is quantity. Can you see that? Come again. Yes. Come again. Top I said that one. if you're looking at the top and the, that's number one and two. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at only number, when I do, when I'm comparing, I'll compare one and two, then I'll compare two and three. Okay. So if I'm looking at one and two, you can see that the price is SP, SP. So standard price is constant. It is the quantity that is changing. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so in that case now, we call this the usage because it's usage, that's the quantity used. Mm. So this is our usage variance. Now, if I go down, so what I will do is I'll compare the figure I have here with the, so I'll have a figure, this quantity times this price will give me a figure that will be here. So I have a figure here. So let's call this X. X, that's our standard quantity standard price. And then I will do my actual quantity standard price. I'll have another figure here. And then the difference between two of them. So I'll just do top minus bottom. The difference between these two will be my variance. Okay. My variance will be a figure there. And um, one of the series we will see as our variances start becoming more interesting as we do our variances at this level. So our advanced variances, we'll see that the great thing about this performer is that once you do top minus bottom, if top is bigger than bottom, then that is positive. And positive means favorable. Favorable. Less than bottom, then it is negative and negative is adverse. You will never need to change it. 
one of the problems with other methods of teaching variances is, is that, first of all, to get the number is work. Once you've gotten the number, now to decide whether it's favorable or adverse is another separate thing again. And like I said, the funny thing about variance is even if you get this number and you say, and you just leave the number like that, for example, if you get 50 and you say, my answer is 50, this 400 marks, you will get zero for this. That's for sure of it. You get absolutely nothing if you just write 50. So your 50 has to be, is it 50 favorable or 50 adverse? If you don't give me any information about it, then I can't give you any mark for it. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Please, these are the basic things that we need to um, be very conscious of before we move on. Is there any question so far? Okay, so we move on. So we'll get our base now. So we'll get actual quantity, actual price. So that's what we are comparing. Now we can now compare the second and the third. So we're comparing actual quantity standard price with actual quantity actual price. Now, if we look at these two, comparing them with each other, we can see that the quantity is constant, right? It's actual quantity, actual quantity. Those two are constant. What is changing is the price. Can you see that? Yeah. I need you, this thing, uh, by the time I start explaining the thing that is in front, it will now be um, a lot of work if we cannot get it from here. So that's what I'm doing before I start. Please, can you see that the quantity is constant here? Is the price that is changing? Yes. So in this case now, since it's the price that is changing, then it means that obviously that should be our price variance. Mr. Rashid, is this fine? Yeah, cool. Okay. So we'll compare top minus bottom again. If top is bigger than bottom, then we have favorable. If top is less than bottom, we have adverse. So that's really, so we have values here and values here. And we're comparing them with each other. Okay, so that's how material will be. That's the same thing for labor, for overhead, and for the overhead. Then after that, we can now go to our price variances, but this is how all the variances will be for, for, for cost. So all our cost variances will still look like this. Again, Brad. I said Brad. All, our variances, all our variances will look like that, that. So we'll do exactly the same thing for all the other ones. Oh, no, for, over, for fixed overhead. Same. Okay, so the fixed overhead, I'll make a small adjustment to it. Even though it's unlikely that you will see fixed overhead in the exam, it's almost impossible actually. Okay, so let my direct labor. So let me see whether we can just put all the variances out now. You look at this performa for the next um, 22 hours, and then we'll be back to do justice to it. So direct. So we we'll look at labor now. Okay, so I'll just, just copy that and I'll be using that throughout. So you see that it's exactly the same thing. So I'm glad that it's like this so that we can just see the very little adjustments we are going to make. So instead of quantity, we'll have hours 
So we're going to have hours for everything. Instead of quantity, we'll have hours. Instead of quantity, we'll have hours. So once you memorize the first one, so S, 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 A, S, A, A. That's all you need to memorize and you're fine. S, S, A, S, A, A. That's all. Once you get that, then you're halfway through variance. And then the... How do you mean P, P, L, R? R. You said what? It's standard rate. No, you just to change it now, whichever. No, I'm changing, I'm changing them. I'm changing, I copied and pasted, so I'm just changing them. All I'm saying is, remember that your top is SS, whether it's quantity or hours, whether it's price or rate. Your top is SS, your middle is AS. So actual standard, so your top is standard standard, your middle is actual standard, your lower is actual actual. That's all I want you to remember. Okay. So S-S-A-S-A-A. That's all. Once you can remember that one, then we are good. Now for the efficiency, uh, for the labor, we said that usage is measured in terms of efficiency. Mm -hmm. And our price is really labor rate. That's all. So we are done with that. We go to, so if you wanted idle time now, you would have incorporated one into this. We don't do idle time really at this level, so I'll just ignore it. So we'll go to the next one. So we look at variable overhead. And exactly the same thing again. So this is exactly really Exactly like labor. So instead, let me copy labor. Let me make it easier. So we just do exactly the same thing like labor. No difference, just one slight adjustment to labor. So it's still the same, SS, AS, AH. Would you? Would you? So instead yeah. of rate, uh -huh. um, so you promised me something. What was that? You can't remember. Next week, I've reached you. <laughs> you sir? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next week, I've reached do you understand what do you understand what has been going on so far? Yeah, I do. You sir? Yeah, you do. Okay, that's good. Because you're one of the new. Okay, so um that's our very variable overhead variance. So finally, let's do our fixed overhead variance. So our fixed overhead variances, same as above, same thing. Projected. So there's only one small adjustment to this because remember we said, so if we will, if we come and look at this one now, that's where we're going to have a slight challenge being able to explain. Our variance from here to here, what we're going to do now is just make an adjust to this. I'm going to add one new thing because with the with the ex fixed ex fixed variances, I would have to incorporate a row into the middle. So I would have my budgeted hours standard rate which is my budget so if you will your budgeted hour standard rate is your budget your budgeted your fixed budget your standard hour standard rate is your flex budget these are the real small small things that you need to remember 
your standard, we said, if we go back up, we said that our standard is based on the actual level of activity. Can you remember that? We said standard mm -hmm. hours, standard quantity, standard rates. Oh, sorry, not that. Huh? Didn't you say it? Yes, now. We said standard hours, standard rates, standard quantity, standard. <coughs> Either the standard quantity or the standard hour is short for standard quantity of actual production. Standard quantity or standard hours of actual production. This is maybe the most important thing we've said since morning. So this will be standard on actual units or actual level. So the standard multiplied by the actual level level of activity is your standard funny that i say your standard which is really your flexed budget on the other hand your standard multiplied by your budgeted level is your budget. And that is essentially your fixed budget. budget. As we start working on this thing, you will see clarity. Now, for a brand. Hello. Yes, sir. This now. Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead, sir. This is now, eh? I can hear you. Yes. It's actually the difference between the flex and the actual. Yes, because you have to compare like with like. We go back to our earlier discussion. Every time we are doing, we you can only compare your flex budget with your actual. with your actual. You can't compare apple and oranges if you compare your budget your fixed budget with your actual you're not making any sense that is illogical it's not it's not you're just doing your own it doesn't make any sense because the budget and the actual if they are not based on the same level of activity if i if i produce 10 units and you produce 20 units then your sales variances will be favorable compared to mine i can sell higher than you when i produce yes. less than you I will also incur less cost than you because I produce less than you. So that's not logical. However, if two of us produce 20 units and they want to compare our performance, then that's logical now. So you compare based on the same level of activity, except with the fixed, fixed part. And if you think about it, we said when we are looking at fixed, it's not important whether the level of activity changes or not. Fixed costs will stay the same. That is why we introduced this final part of the budget. Okay. The final part, the budgeted part, because it will stay constant. So that's the only, the third rule, this incorporation here, that's the only incorporation we have that makes this different from the other ones. Do you understand what I'm saying, sir? Oh, okay, I'm not hearing you. It is... I didn't hear you clearly. Okay, so we said, that this, uh, this one is capacity. So the middle one is capacity. Now what I wanted was the total of these two now, and let me put it in the middle. I hope this will not cause confusion. But the total of these two now is our, our volume. volume variance, total volume variance. So the total of these two, that's one and three now is what you're comparing, is your volume variance. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. And then I know there are some people I don't want to. That one is not, you're not a representative of the public. And then your three minus four. So one minus two is efficiency. Two minus three is capacity. One minus three is volume. And um, three minus four is expenditure. So we'll continue from here tomorrow. We've run out of, um, we have entered another person's class. So we'll just continue from here. Please, 
memorize these things, make sure you're clear about them because this is the work we're going to do. And if you start from the beginning, I'm glad that we ended here so that you can just take this time to try and look at these things and make small sense out of them. We'll continue from here tomorrow. Uh, I'll start for the other question. 